Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the best stage ever made in the history of Sonic the Hedgehog. A stage so iconic that it's now being reused in like a million Sonic titles. Yes, that's me exaggerating, but the point is still there. Heck, this stage laid out the foundation for the existence of Sonic, for the origins of Sonic. And that, my friends, is Green Hill Zone. And yet I'm getting so sick of seeing it. What is wrong with me? Nah, but all kidding aside, although I'm not really kidding about how often Green Hill's being reused, but yeah. <laughs> we do have some Green Hill related stuff to go over for Sonic Frontiers in this video. Players at EGX London have been able to discover a 2D variant of the iconic stage, and it features elements borrowed directly from Green Hill Act 1 in Sonic Generations, a stage initially intended only for Sonic's classic self. Presumably, this stage can be found on Chronos Island, as EGX London does feature the same timed demo shown off at Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show. I almost didn't catch this before the video went up, but there is a complete playthrough of this Green Hill stage out and about, thanks to the pack leader Wolf. This is shaping up to be a decent layout, but then it's based on an already decent layout in Sonic Generation, so of course it's going to be the case. What I immediately noticed watching this though, is that modern Sonic can actually roll, as in tapping down while running to actually roll, just like how classic Sonic can do. I am not used to this! <laughs> in the game where modern Sonic can spin dash, I had to do that first to get him to roll all, but now for once I don't have to actually do that? This could be fun. However, I'm not sure how well the physics are holding up with the roll, as I've seen a lot of weird instances in this clip. For example, what the heck just happened here? Like, huh? Also, on watching the other clip, I noticed it put up some blocks directly above this tunnel near the start of the stage. So I assume they made the upper route impassable, but nah, you can air boost above the blocks to explore an upper pathway. Whew! Crisis averted! <laughs> I've also seen people not recognizing the Green Hill layout and therefore assuming that it is brand new. Huh. <laughs> I only wish it was new, but I promise you, it isn't. As evidence, here's footage taken from Green Hill Act 1 in Sonic Generations, being compared side by side with the Green Hill stage in Sonic Frontiers. It won't take you more than a few seconds of watching to catch the staggering number of similarities, even in the enemy placement for the love of god. As already been established by Sonic Team, Cyberspace is meant to borrow heavily from Sonic's legacy stages, layouts and all. There will be newer layouts according to them, but something tells me that the scale be tipped heavily in the favor of reused layouts as opposed to original layouts, so I'd love to be wrong about this. If you've been following my channel for a while, you already know my thoughts on what I consider to be the cyberspace debacle, so I'm not going to repeat them here. At the very least, this proves that classic stages are coming along for the ride in Sonic Frontiers, and I guess it'll be fascinating to play them as modern Sonic, but somehow I doubt that this is something the Sonic Generation's modding community has not already attempted. As far as I've been made aware, Sonic Generations is one of those games with the greatest amount of mod support, so it would not shock me at all if there's a mod floating around while you can play the modern Sonic in the classic variants of each generation stage. But I get to get to do that in official capacity now, so huh, that's kind of cool. From watching the story trailer at Gamescom, we already know that there will be at least one other cyberspace Green Hill stage that features all of the 2D elements from Generations Green Hill Act 2 condensed into a single stage, only you play it during the sunset. But as far as I'm aware, players have not yet discovered this stage in the demo. They did find a 3D Green Hill stage in the sunset, but not a 2D variant. And I want to assume that will be the end of that, but if you'll remember, the first Green Hill cyberspace stage with which you start the entire game is a copy of Windmill Isle Act 1 The Sonic Unleashed. So I think it's safe to say there will be more Green Hill stages out there waiting to be discovered. What I tell you, man, Green Hill just won't go away! But I'm gonna ask Green Hill to stay for a while longer because we are not done talking about it yet. We got a sample of the soundtrack for this guy's sanctuary and I guess Chemical Plant, but that one's still a little too garble for me to really get a feel for it. But now we have a much clearer sample of the cyberspace soundtrack for Green Hill, courtesy of 4Gamers News from Tokyo Game Show. They provide similar content for Sky Sanctuary, and now we've got it for Green Hill too. And, well, I won't play it back here, but I will tell you from my own perspective that it actually seems kind of okay. Going into this, I was a little bit worried because MTB Cool described the Green Hill soundtrack to be kind of underwhelming, 
but I personally don't share Miss Outlook. I actually think it fits the tone of how Green Hill's being used in this case. Sonic is running the risk of being trapped in cyberspace after being separated from Tails and Amy, and he now has to fight to get back out. And if you listen closely to the soundtrack, you can even hear monologue that appears to be based on Sage's mindset. I can't really make out the monologue though, it's a little bit too low, but overall, I think it really delivers on the feel they were going for with Cyberspace Green Hill. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't consider this theme to be a banger by any means, at least not right now. It might be one of those things that'll grow on me over time though, I guess we will have to see. The Sky Sanctuary vocal theme certainly did grow on me. At first, I wasn't too sure what to think of it, but when a much clearer sample of a soundtrack came out, I found myself listening to it on repeat. I actually think this is a gem, and I'm honestly surprised by how much I like it, but yeah, there you go. As far as I can understand, the lyrics seem to commonly consist of these two lines, going into the light and disappearing. I'd say that's pretty descriptive of the concept of cyberspace. And though I am by no means an analyst when it comes to music, I think I like the choice of instruments by Sky Sanctuary. The jury's still out on Green Hill though, but it's definitely not a disaster, I'll tell you that. When it comes to cyberspace, if there's any silver lining, it's gotta be the soundtrack. I don't think it's over the top, but I believe it holds some promise. But this is a Sonic game. They have a good track record for not disappointing with the soundtrack. It's not to say they haven't disappointed with it at all, but usually they don't, so that's some consolation, right? On another note, I know it has nothing to do with Green Hill or Cyberspace, but I do want to point something out. While watching the video from 4Gamers News, I got to listen to some samples of Sonic's Japanese voice, or Junichi Kanemaru, the Japanese voice actor for Sonic. Similar to Roger Craig Smith, he too is undergoing a change in his voice direction, or so it would seem. As I'm listening to Sonic here, we're getting a much grittier sounding blue hedgehog. No, not like Dark Sonic vibes from Sonic X or anything like that. But all kidding aside, Junichi Kanemaru is definitely holding it down with Sonic. As he normally does, considering he's always been one of the best voice talents for the Blue Hedgehog. So I was never really worried about him. You don't get to listen to that many samples of his performance in this video, but from a little bit you do get to listen to? He's knocking it out of the park, without a doubt. Speaking of which, people who have played Sonic Frontiers at EGX London have reported being just as blown away by Roger's performance with Sonic. And though I was initially split down the middle on it, I like certain parts of Roger's work, but others I'm still up in the air about. For people to be happy with it, that's definitely promising to hear. And they've also reported smiling from ear to ear when it came to being treated to elements of the Sonic Frontier storyline. As someone who absolutely believes that a cohesive story is every bit as important as the rest of the package, if we're getting a good Sonic story in a Sonic game, it truly is a good time to be a Sonic fan. I mean, I was already supremely confident that we'd be getting a fantastic story from what I've seen of the cutscenes being shared with us, but to hear other people vouching for the story also? Oh hell yeah, man. Now you're probably wondering just how well the other voice actor will stack up in Sonic Frontiers. I am too but we may have been given a glimpse into the future with the latest Tales Tube episode from the official Sonic YouTube channel. Knuckles in particular, he was so much fun to listen to, and it's shown definite changes in Dave B. Mitchell's performance since Team Sonic Racing in 2019, as how he sounded here was, in my opinion, far more suited for the kind of character that Knuckles is. Some aren't too overly blown away by what they've heard here, but I'm definitely leaning towards a positive, and I think with more work, he could be excellent. And Knuckle was so in character here that it was beautiful. Who else here is excited to get to the first cutscene in Frontiers where we actually see Knuckles the Echidna and he picks on Sonic? Ah man. Anyway, that does it for this latest Frontier discussion video, but as always, keep it here for my thoughts on the rest of the content that gets shared with us from EGX London and any other events that Frontiers might pop up at, but with the game so close to release now, I probably wouldn't push your luck in that respect. But We'll see. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, drop those likes and comments, and don't forget to sub and ring that bell for more Sonic videos. And thanks to everybody who shared their content that's been featured here in this video. All credits will be given where they are due, and the original sources will be linked in the description below. Take care guys, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace! Don't forget, blue blur for life. Take care. <laughs>